afternoon, <coughs> after the previous um, speech, it feels a little bit like a resurrection to be here, I have to say. But then the, the talk wasn't with the right title. Anyway, <coughs> I have a totally different subject. I would like to talk about big data and uh, actually how big data works in HR. Um, in my previous role as CEO of a, a multinational IT company, hardware IT company, we were growing from a very small base to a large base with an operation in 44 countries. And in that process, we were recruiting a lot. In the end, we had people, uh, uh, own people, own staff in 10 countries. And uh, we were using recruiters for that. And we were using uh, recruiters especially to uh, hire people far away from our own home turf. And we had good recruiters, and we had less good recruiters, like always in life. And, but what struck me really was that the process was everywhere extremely laborious, whether it was Dubai, the UK, or Germany, it doesn't matter. The process was really laborious, was inefficient, was costly, and took ages, the recruiting process. And actually, it was not only for us as a company, but also for the candidates, the same problem. So I thought we should do this fundamentally different. Um, that's where actually my mission, or maybe my dream, started, to put together the technology and the ecosystem to make this better, to improve this. Um, I would like to take you to a, a little trip into the future to 2025. So I would like to introduce you to Tom in 2025. Tom is an engineer, and um, he just finished working for a solar energy company. It's actually his first day after he worked for that company. Uh, besides being an engineer, he's a, really, a guy that really loves working with people, loves, loves working in an international environment. Uh, multicultural, he's a really person's person, um, a great team player. And uh, Tom is sitting at his breakfast at his first day after the project that lasted about two years. And today, in today's terms, we would say Tom is in between jobs. But in 2025, the concept of in between jobs doesn't exist anymore. It's just an old concept back from 2015. Um, Tom is sitting at breakfast and he's browsing in, uh, browsing in this app, which is a personal virtual assistant, a piece of very smart software that helps him to navigate his uh, labor market, his career. And uh, Tom, actually, Tom calls his app Jane, because even in 2025, uh, men sometimes want to be Tarzan. So that doesn't change. Um, so Tom is sitting at breakfast and browsing his app, and he's looking at all the suggestions that Jane gave him, provided him with. Um, all kinds of new projects Tom could do. Um, and actually, he's also reading the comments that uh, his career team mates made on the information provided by Jane. So next to Jane, next to the artificial intelligence app, he has a, t a career team. Uh, that consists of friends and professionals that help him make the right decisions. So he's, he's browsing and reading that to prepare a meeting at 11 o'clock. In this team, he has a career coach, we call it today. And actually, the coach is a former recruiter. Uh, he learned to know in the company they worked together back in 2019. And um, they got along together, they trust each other. So he invited him in his career team. Actually, by 2025, most recruiters are no recruiters anymore. They are coaches. So they go into the meeting, they discuss the options, and they reach two conclusions. First conclusion is that Tom needs to improve his German skills and uh, his negotiation skills. Second conclusion is that out of the proposals done by Jane, he selects two um, and after the meeting, he assigns Jane to go um, uh, to, to, to check with the companies whether he's eligible for going on an interview. So back to 2015. So with all the technology we have, 
today. We have a huge recruitment sector. We have job boards. We have network sites. We have um, the internet, social media. We have all that. Would you reckon that we are ready for the challenge of the future in, in HR, in recruitment? Given my personal experience, my answer is no. So the labor market today is still extremely complex, extremely intransparent, extremely costly, and it takes always a long time to find the best match. And to highlight that, I would like to elaborate a bit on three problems that we face, that we already today face, but also uh, will we face some more in the future. Problem number one, mismatch. There is a lot of evidence that companies and people candidates settle for the less optimal match. So if they would have had much better information, they would have had made different choices. Um, meaning companies get better candidates and candidates get better jobs. Uh, mismatch is, by the way, not only a problem of uh, people that work, it's also a problem for the unemployed people. It's about a quarter of today's unemployment that is uh, not because the jobs are not there for the people that are unemployed, but because the people that are unemployed and the jobs do not meet together, do not, are not matched together. So mismatch is an important problem in the lives of people, as well as for the economy. That wasn't one. Problem number two, most people hate their jobs. Can I see some hands? Who loves his job? Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, this must be the TED effect. Uh, you're all extremely positive people here in this audience, otherwise you wouldn't be here. It's actually not, not, not the reality. There has been a research from Gallup, done in 144 countries, and they found out that 87% of people are disconnected with their jobs. They don't like their jobs. 87%. It, it varies a bit from country to country. The Netherlands is slightly better, slightly better, but it's 87%. About a quarter, 24%, is even actively disengaged meaning they are undermining the company they work for, or the co-workers, 24%. Meaning 13% of people are the people that are responsible for pushing the boundaries, for, the, for creating the innovation, only 13%. Problem number three, organizations become completely flexible, and many jobs will disappear. Can I see some more hands again? Who considers him or herself in the mid-segment of the pyramid, in the middle segment job level? Like finance, administration, uh, logistics, sales. I don't see many hands. Yeah, you're, you're totally not statistically representative audience, I see. <laughs> So, Oxford University researched and found out that by 2035, 47% of jobs in the US will be gone, the jobs that we have today. 47% of jobs in the US will be gone. Imagine that. Most of these jobs are in the middle segment. Uh, Deloitte did this research in the Netherlands as well, uh, on a smaller scale, and they found out that 2 million to 3 million jobs will be gone in the Netherlands as well in the next decade, in the next 10 years. So what we see is an enormous, enormous flexibilization and disappearing jobs and changing skill sets. So my father had two jobs in his life in the town he lived, basically. I am in my fifth job right now, and I worked internationally. And my kids, they probably have 
25 or more jobs or assignments. And um, or maybe they are forever in a kind of a freelance situation. So whatever we can say, it's clear that the labor market will be extremely volatile. And um, it will, there will be lots of uncertainties for people. And the way we manage our career will completely change. So, I believe, so, let, so what can we do about this? What can we do about this? How can we organize for this? And I believe that this massive loss of jobs we just saw um, are actually not a threat, because no one wants to do them, hence 87% not happy, uh, but it's actually an opportunity for personal development. It's an opportunity to create a better system. Because the same disruptive forces, the same technologies that created this problem, being the internet, being artificial intelligence, automation software, uh, social media, these same forces are the same forces that create the solution. However, the solution will be different. It will not be the big data as we know it today. It will not be the social media as we know it today, where some companies far away will try to second guess our identity because of our online behavior. It will not be, <clears throat> excuse me, it will not be the same education system as we saw this morning in Jan's story. It will not be even the same social security system. So I see a future where we all, collectively and individually, use our own big data to create a better, more successful and happier life. And in this life, we say goodbye to information overload and hello to transparency and wisdom. However, in this future, we put artificial intelligent tools like, Jane, like Tom has Jane in the example in the hands of everyone. And Jane can help Tom navigate his career. The same artificial intelligence tools we will have. And we will own our own data. We will own our own data. Because of legislation and because of technology. No companies, some, some companies far away. We will own our own identity. And that will be an explicit identity, meaning I determine what my identity is, not someone else. And in this future, we will put soft skills, uh, personality, um, maybe my cultural fit, into our profile, just like the hard skills. And tools like Jane will know where I, and when I need to develop my soft skills and help me there. And in this future, we will combine artificial intelligence and big data together with teamwork and uh, crowd expertise to create um, clarity, transparency, and also human interpretation, and therefore wisdom. So, if we use the technologies in the right fashion, in the right manner, it's not a threat. It's actually an opportunity and it will solve the problems of mismatch, uh, the problems of not happy, uh, be, uh, employees that are not happy, um, and it will empower future generations to strive for self-effectuation and for earning a stable income over time, regardless how volatile, how dynamic the environment is. Tom just finished his lunch and 
Jane reported back and said, the companies that you selected this morning, the two companies, they reported back that they wanted to see you. And Tom is extremely happy that he lives in 2025 with a very organic, human, and smooth labor market. Thank you very much.